Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth part of the webinar series on using te technical analysis from a trader's perspective. This is your host, Prasenjit Biswas. And uh, so far, we have covered quite a lot of topics in the preceding four webinars. And we have talked about how to identify trades using trend lines and uh, patterns actionable ideas uh, then we also looked into uh, using some of the indicators like rsi and volume as a filter to identify trades and exactly how you can use them to improve your performance and then uh, in the last webinar we also talked about reading markets which is very critical in terms of uh, understanding the environment as this would also help you to understand when you need to swing your bat and when you need to keep quiet. So today I will be talking about the challenges that uh, one would face when it comes to uh, trading because from the uh, you know practitioner's perspective, uh, there are a lot of issues that you might face which uh, you know which comes up when it comes to practical trading uh, when there is a real money that you are putting, uh, uh into the game so we will look into all of that and we will try to uh understand what can go wrong and how to deal with those uh situations that you uh, are likely to face if you are going for a real trade uh, in your career so the challenge that uh, one generally comes across is uh, firstly uh, the fact that uh, there has to be you know some mechanism or method to find out trades consistently over a period of time again and again and uh, keep doing it uh, uh, every single day so that is one of the challenges that people face and uh, uh, at times it really becomes difficult as well because uh, while you're trading for yourself and uh, you know looking at the market every day it does take a lot of toll on your psychological uh, uh, bent as well second is the fact that markets being quite unpredictable and they are by default uh, unpredictable in nature. So when a trade goes wrong, you feel uh, ditched by the market and you feel that you know things are not uh, going to go as per your plan and so you lose uh, 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 your confidence and you even lose your faith on your abilities. So these are the things that uh, actually happen to a lot of traders that I have seen. And uh, of course, that would add to your mental stress uh so all of it makes the whole thing uh slightly more difficult for especially for the newcomers and then uh you know once uh there is a question mark in your mind about, regarding your tools and methods then you look for uh improving your method and maybe you look for uh, some better tool that you think that uh, there exists in the market and uh, you maybe seek uh, try to seek help from uh, experts and gurus and uh, then you also try to hunt for some kind of a software which can probably give you trading signals and uh, maybe make your life easier so these are the things that really people come across and these are the things that uh, you know uh, I would say that uh, I have seen uh, facing uh, a challenge in, in reality so broadly if you ask me all these problems can be segregated into three categories and that would be the three m's uh, that is the root of all problems in terms of the method the me and the mind so when it comes to method what do i mean by that is you know it is important to have a method which works so it is important that you master one particular technique and uh, you have faith uh, on that particular method and you really understand that method. So the idea is that uh, there are so many methods in the market, right? So there are so many uh, tools in the technical arsenal. Uh, but the idea is not to learn, I mean, uh, you know, not to just uh, know each of the methods, but what is important is to have a mastery on at least one particular method where you are probably uh, in the top notch, you're in the top percentile when it comes to that particular method, because that is what will give you that edge. 
The second thing is that it is important for you also to understand the horizon that you are comfortable with. Say, for example, there are people who are comfortable uh, trading on a slightly longer term horizon, like uh, holding a stock for about a month or a couple of months. And then there are other people who are uh, purely intraday traders. They do not uh, quite uh, feel comfortable when it comes to holding for two months. Like uh, there is a friend of mine who does only bank nifty intraday trading and he uh, does uh, pretty well. And uh, if you let me, I have to talk about myself, I am in between. I do not do intraday and I do not recommend the intraday trades much. But then uh, uh, what I do is uh, kind of a momentum trade for about a week's time. Uh, so that's what I, I do. So it is also important for you to understand what time scale you are comfortable. And then it is also important to understand what kind of asset class uh, you want to trade. So based on your method, uh, I mean, you can see that uh, technical analysis works on every asset class. That is true. But then uh, what you are comfortable with trading and what you understand uh, better uh, and what actually fits your method well is also important because there are certain asset classes which are uh, you know, uh, trending in nature and which are very uh, long range uh, 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 trending. And then there are uh, certain assets which are not, uh, which do not have a very, very long range uh, trends. So something like a currency will not have a very, very long range trend. It, it, it will never happen that maybe your uh, ISD, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rupee uh, USD will go to uh, some 500 rupees uh, and then 1000 rupees. So it cannot just keep on going up and up. So there is uh, a specific uh, behavior related to the asset classes as well. And then it is also uh, important to understand uh, the profile of your method in terms of the risk reward, the strike rate that it has, and then you know how many, how much, uh, how many trades you would get. You know the frequency. If I have to talk about like how many trades you are going to expect during a month or maybe in a day if you're doing a day trade so how many trades do you expect uh, to get uh, based on your method so these are the things which are uh, important and then in terms of the uh, specific uh, risk uh, profiling uh, like the runoff losses and uh, the drawdowns uh, that is uh, you are going to see uh, and that is likely to come so that is what will help you to uh, kind of have a have the right kind of leverage and have the right kind of capital deployment as well and finally of course uh, the understanding of the return is very important like what kind of return you are going to uh, uh, you should be expecting for uh, your method uh, on a annualized basis so these are the th certain things that you have to keep in mind and, and probably the uh, method that we discussed in the previous webinars which is based on trend lines and uh, your uh, patterns uh, do have a reasonable degree of accuracy and of course you need to uh, practice harder and uh, only uh, you know sufficient amount of time is given then only you can achieve that much of uh, confidence you will get that confidence in your method so the other thing that is important is the aspects of money management so this is the least understood and the, probably one of the important things in my opinion uh, that that is not really uh, taken care of by most of the people who are new to the market so if you are like uh, thinking of your own uh, proprietary trading or personal trading then this is uh, what is very important i would say for you to really understand so there is a saying in the market that uh, discipline is very important and one must maintain discipline. And if your stop losses are triggered, uh, then you got to exit. And you, if you have your targets in your mind and until your targets are achieved, you also got to hold for your trades. So the point is that how exactly do you do that? I mean, it is not that easy that if your stop losses are triggered and uh, you can like uh, simply exit and come back to the market uh, again with the same aggression and confidence so it does not really happen that so it takes a lot of practice and there are certain things that needs to be taken care of before you can actually maintain the discipline so we will look into all those things so the point is that uh, you know how it goes is basically if you ignore the position sizing then that actually leads to an oversized uh, positions and when the 
you know price goes against you then what you encounter is a, a loss which is larger than your expectation and that's where everything you know uh, the problem arises and that is where people find it very difficult to uh, you know uh, to deal with and uh, take the losses so the moment uh, you have a loss which is kind of more than your expectation let's say if i uh, would have approached the market with the mindset that i can risk say about uh, uh, 10000 rupees uh, for a particular trade and then because of the position sizing if i see that uh, by the time my stop loss is uh, you know reached i am at a loss of about 25 to 30000 so if i was thinking for a 10000 rupees loss now i have a 25000 uh, rupees loss so it is pretty big in comparison to what I had uh, in my mind. So emotionally, it is very difficult for anyone to accept such kind of a loss. And that's where people compromise on their uh, stop losses and targets. And what eventually leads to is uh, the, the disaster. So the key takeaway is that uh, always have the position sizing in mind and you got to take the you know, right sized positions. Not to say that uh, leveraging is bad, but then uh, you must know what is the right leverage uh, that is suitable for you. For example, if you're uh, doing a, a future trade, uh, then probably exchange would charge about 25 to 30% uh, on your uh, future position, so which is like a 3x leverage. But then, then that is a minimum requirement uh, from the exchange standpoint. Now, if you have an understanding of your run of losses and the uh, amount of risk that you are likely to you know see for a given trade let's say if i am keeping a stop loss of about five percent on any given trade and then uh say if i have a position of about uh say about 10 lakhs uh which is like one lot uh say it is uh, of the size of a 10 lakhs uh, total volume then i would be actually risking about fifty thousand for that trade so now what this means is that uh, for a position of 10 lakh, exchange would be charging somewhere around two and uh, two and a half lakh to about three lakh rupees. Now, if I only had say about uh, four lakh rupees in my account, and then if I'm uh, taking such uh, positions, then it is quite possible that if two trades go wrong, then uh, I won't have enough capital in my account to take the uh, third trade or the fourth trade. So that's what is important for you to understand: like how much runoff losses can your strategy absorb, and how much. Uh, should be the leverage in that case. So if I have a 5% stop loss generally, and if I can have a runoff, say, about uh, three to four trades, uh, which can go into a loss. So that means uh, uh, for every trade, if I take, say, about uh, five lakh rupees position, then uh, if uh, one trade goes wrong, then I'm going to lose about uh, 25,000 rupees. And let's say if I have a loss of four consecutive losses, of 25,000 each, then uh, I would end up into a total loss of about 1 lakh rupees. So that would mean that if I have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, take positions in, in certain uh, futures, then I must at least have uh, something more than 1 lakh or about 1.5 lakh extra uh, above what the exchange would be charging. So if exchange is charging me 3 lakh rupees for a trade or uh, you know three and a half lakh rupees for any trade then i must keep about say five lakh rupees into my account so this will keep you know the necessary capital that is required uh, to to take the next trade and uh, this is probably also important from a psychological standpoint so positions i think is uh, what uh, needs to be worked on and then uh, the next question is that uh, why stop losses are important like if you say that uh, uh, stop losses are important, uh, then of course uh, you would also argue that uh, there are certain cases where you have uh, seen that a trade, you know, uh, goes and hits your stop loss, and then again it would come back. So I myself am saying that uh, yes, it does happen that you put a stop loss, it might get triggered, and then again come back. It doesn't matter. I mean, no, uh, no, no trader has ever uh, done any trade without you know taking a loss. So the point is that if you did not uh, maintain the stop loss, then maybe out of the 100 trades that you are taking, so let's say about 30% of the trades go wrong. So these are the losing ones. So 
if you do not maintain any stop losses here, then what will happen is that uh, probably 27 trades out of 30 would again come back to your, you know, your buying price. So uh, you would feel that all these 27 trades that you actually took the loss are uh, were all, uh, uh, you know, needless. So uh, that is true. I mean, apparently it looks uh, like that. But then the question is that what about the rest of the three trades? So it is true that in uh, 27 out of 30, you might have recovered your losses even if you would not have kept your stop losses. But then the rest of the three trades are like, you know, they are like atom bombs. So they can completely destroy your portfolio and you don't need three atom bombs. You need only one atom bomb to destroy your portfolio. So this could be a DHFL, you know, it could be a Yes Bank at 400. Uh, it could be some JP associate. It could be some Suzlon. So it could have been any stock you know, which could have really taken you down. And uh, that is the reason that uh, we need to take losses even if it seems unnecessary at times. So that is what always will keep you in the game. Just remember one thing that, uh, you know, uh, trading stock markets are like, you know, it's like a, it's like a, you know, never ending process. And it is like a war that is, you know, uh, going on. So if you have to win the war, then, uh, you have to be alive. You cannot just uh, afford to, you know, die and uh, you know you uh, lose the battle altogether. So that's what uh, is important. That uh, you have to uh, be in the game to win the game. So therefore, I would say that it is better that you take small losses, which can be recovered in the next trade or maybe in the next two trades. But then, uh, if you do not take those uh, apparently unnecessary losses, then you might someday uh, you know hit upon a trade and uh, which can completely take you down now the next point is uh, regarding the psychological game the you know the the, the mindset which is again uh, uh, very important so in my initial days when i joined the industry i felt that uh, knowing how to pick stocks was everything but then uh, over a period of time, after 15 years of experience in this industry, I realized that profit method is only 20% and the risk management and the emotional control is actually 80%. In fact, uh, that is what differentiates one trader from another uh, trader. So there are certain unique qualities or uh, certain traits that uh, some percentage of the successful traders have. And to me, it is the psychological aspect. So the whole point is that how do you really uh, achieve the right mindset that is required for uh, a trader you know, to be a successful trader. So the first thing that one needs to do is define your risk amount, which I've already discussed. So, so that is very important that you must have a very clear uh, risk amount in mind. And uh, you know, when you go for a trade, let's say if you're taking uh, a 10,000 rupees uh, you know, kind of risk for a given trade, uh, my suggestion is that do a dry run in your mind, you know, do a psychological kind of a, you know, uh, tuning to your mind that you have already uh, taken the loss and, you know, write off the loss in your mind. So that actually will help you uh, very much because when the situation would uh, arise, in, in, uh, in case if your stop losses are triggered, then in case if you actually have to take that 10,000 rupees loss, you will be able to do it very easily because you have already done that dry run in your mind. So then there is a concept of uh, uh, time as a stop loss that I use. So in case if a trade that you feel is not working out or it is likely to fail and uh, it is not going to, uh, you know, uh, respond according to your initial observation or your initial analysis, then uh, it is better that you let go that trade, you know, don't wait for the stop loss to actually get triggered. So if you can save one or two percent uh, in a losing trade, so that is the money that you make actually. So it is every penny saved is a penny gained. So the point is that uh, if you feel that a trade is not going in your favor, just come out of it. So I myself do it like that. I mean, I don't. Uh, if a trade has like a you know five-day horizon in my mind, and if I see that uh, nothing is happening uh, to that trade in the next uh, say two or three days after taking the trade and if i feel that uh, there is lack of momentum in the trade i prefer to come out at cost or maybe marginally at a loss or maybe marginally in profit 
so you know that's what keeps me psychologically uh, you know unbiased in the game so just remember one thing that uh, the longer you hold a trade in the market uh, you know then what happens is the influence of the market on the stock becomes more than the inherent uh, uh, you know setup of the stock itself so the more a longer horizon you are holding the trade the more influence of the market that is going to impact the movement of the stock so uh, use time as a stop loss i think uh, you will uh, eventually uh, understand what i'm trying to say uh, i mean it will be uh, probably it will help you then think of uh, every trade as a uh, probability so uh, the moment you think that a trade is just a probability and it can either go right or it can go wrong then uh, you are again emotionally detached from the trade so that's what will keep you uh, kind of uh, emotionally balanced so uh, be open to the fact that it can go wrong and just remember one thing to make money you don't have to be correct always and just remember this and uh, it will be all fine with you so let the uh, mathematics play out and let the probability uh, you know, uh, numbers stay out for you. So if you feel that if your method has a strike rate of about 65%, then just don't bother about this particular trade. It can be amongst those one third of the trades which go wrong, or it could be amongst the two thirds of the trades which go right. So you don't have to worry about uh, which way it is going to be. You just take the trade uh, and that should be it. Third is like, uh, there is always a gap between, you know, thinking and executing. So the big difference between thinking uh, what will happen and really executing the trade uh, is what uh, I call as a psychological gap. And uh, when you see a, you know, an opportunity which satisfies your criteria or conditions, just go for it. You know? Don't have to be bothered about uh, whether it will go right or whether it will go wrong or, uh, uh, you know, don't worry about the outcome, right? So this is what is uh, generally i have seen that a lot of people uh, you know who are good in analysis but they are not somehow able to convert their knowledge into money so probably that's where uh, the issue is with them so they are able to analyze they are able to visualize what will happen but then they do not have that uh, you know guts i would say if i have to use this word uh, to really go for it yeah. so just swing the bat don't have to worry about whether it will be a six or uh, you know you will be out so it's okay if you're uh, you know getting out come back in the next match and you can still score a hundred so that should be the the mindset that you've got to take the opportunities because if you do not take the opportunities then uh, that is probably the biggest risk uh, you're taking as it is said in the market then the fourth point is uh, booking losses versus accepting losses so what do i mean here is that let's say if i uh, take a trade and if my stop losses are uh, triggered then i would actually take the loss come out of the trade but then does it mean, mean that i have accepted the loss not necessarily because taking a loss is something and accepting loss is different booking losses like are like you might have booked the loss but you're not able to you know reconcile with it and accepting on the other side would mean that uh, you do not have any psychological baggage regarding that loss. You are in absolute, you know, you know, in 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 synchronization with uh, what happened uh, to the previous trade, and uh, you do not have any uh, grudge or any uh, regret regarding the trade, or you do not have any kind of negative uh, kind of emotional uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thing going on in your mind, which is uh, you know holding you from taking the next trade. So accepting loss is very important that you reconcile with your losses and you, you know, you, you do not have any kind of uh, baggage uh, uh, like uh, which will influence the next trade. So a lot of people, what they do is that if they have uh, probably uh, suffered a loss in the previous trade, then they think twice before taking the next trade. So, I mean, that's how markets work. But then that's what is the uh, bias that you have to get rid of. So your next trade should be absolutely independent of what happened to you in the previous trade. It doesn't matter if you had made you know, some 20% uh, profit in the previous trade or maybe a 2% loss or a 5% loss in the previous trade. What is important is uh, to understand uh, what is the right thing to do at the moment regarding the position that you are holding. So if your previous trades are dictating what you will be doing next, 
then that's what is you know something which is going to be detrimental to your performance so try to you know uh, disconnect what happened to you previously and uh, try to uh, uh, you know uh, do the right thing that is uh, uh, justified in terms of your uh, that the knowledge you have and uh, should be the right thing to be done at the regarding the merit of the stock that you are holding so again i mean uh, so this is where the position sizing will come into play and if you would have taken a loss which is okay with you let's say if you had the 10000 figure in your mind and maybe if you would have taken a 8000 loss or maybe a 1000 loss then still you are again not have any baggage regarding it because you know that uh, this 10000 loss can be recovered in the next trade so it's like you know taking singles so if you have to score a century in a test match then it's not the sixes that you hit you look for scoring singles and make sure that you do not lose your wicket right so that's how uh, the thing is that uh, try to reconcile with your losses and uh, move just move ahead and then like uh, try to uh, accept uh, you have done any mistake or if there is anything that is uh, lacking in your understanding or because of which you would have lost money and try to take the responsibility on your own because if you try to blame the market uh, or somebody else then uh, the problem will always remain uh, because if you think that it is because of the market for which you have lost the money like in case that uh, you were long on a particular stock and if there was a negative news uh, overnight and because of which the stock just uh, gap down then you know it is uh, something which is inevitable and it can always happen that's where your money management and everything uh, comes into picture where you don't lose uh, you know uh, uh, an amount which you cannot recover so uh, if you understand this and accept this then basically uh, you will feel that it is not with the market it is just that uh, it is the way uh, you know things are and uh, like, uh, at the same point of time if you think of it that uh, if things can gap down against you then it can also you know open in a gap up uh, uh, in your favor so over a longer period of time you know at times something will go against you out of your uh, you know calculation and then there would be something which will uh, probably uh, give you more reward than you would have uh, expected so in the long run believe me that it, these things balance out so all these things uh, are like uh, you know evened out so the point is that uh, there is nothing to uh, really uh, be afraid of uh, or to really fear and uh, if you accept the responsibilities then i mean markets won't be looking like you know something to to beat or something to compete with or you know like an enemy So the takeaway uh, for this session, I would say that uh, it is important for you to know your personality, what kind of uh, trader or investor you are, what is the time scale that you are comfortable and what type of trades you are comfortable. Like we discussed about momentum trading. So uh, if you're uh, you know, doing momentum trading uh, on an intraday basis, if you have that uh, time and uh, the, the infrastructure to do so, then uh, you, you can do that. And, if you feel that you do not have that much of time and you have other obligations and commitments, then probably if you think that, uh, you know, something like a positional or a medium to long term, uh, you know, trades work for you, then go for it. I mean, technical analysis is not about internet trading. Uh, so there is a misconception regarding that, but I hope that all of you are probably aware uh, that uh, technical analysis can be used uh, from about 20 minutes to about 20 years uh, time scale. So, it is important for you to know what is uh, the range that you are comfortable. Second, uh, like as I said, that have a systematic approach. You know, every trade that you are taking should be justified by some rational or some reason. It should not be that you know you are taking trades at random. So let's say if your process is not, it it, it uh, did not be absolutely mechanical in nature, but then it has to be based on certain. Uh, logical rational and certain rules uh, which are like uh, you know which you can uh, replicate so basically the idea is that if you have a systematic approach then uh, then you can probably, uh, you know uh, test your ideas you can back test your ideas and uh, you will be able to replicate your performance so it won't be uh, like a, you know kind of a luck factor uh, thing 
and then uh, always have a realistic goal for yourself like uh, if you think that uh, making say 20% a month is possible and if your method is uh, you know showing uh, you know that much of you know uh, giving you that much of confidence or if the results are showing that it is possible then you know there is nothing wrong in setting up a 20% uh, return goal uh, for a month but then if your method is uh, not you know you know like for a high frequency kind of a trade then uh, uh, it has to be like a reasonable thing that you think uh, you can achieve over a period of time and you can repeat it uh, of, uh, you know, time and again so have a realistic goal for yourself then don't be bothered about if your friend is making 10 percent uh, a month and if you are making five percent a month so you know everything uh, will you know uh, fall into place if you follow your methods consistently the point is that who makes five percent this month is not important or ten percent this month is not important what is important is that uh, who has made you know consistently money for the next 10 or 15 years so even if you're making 10 percent a month and if you can do that for the next 10 years i think uh, you are going to be at the top so the point uh, here is that the performance has to be uh, consistent rather than uh, you know some uh, something which looks very attractive in the short uh, term so again uh, uh, the next point is pay attention to your capital allocation and risk limits so as i said like uh, for every trade you must be aware of how much money you are going to risk and probably uh, do a dry run uh, in your mind before you actually take the trade so that will help you to uh, deal with any negative outcome in case uh, uh, the trade uh, presents with and uh, also uh, avoid this revenge training there is uh, you know uh, there are certain people whom i have seen that if they suffer a loss or uh, you know if a trade goes wrong then they immediately try to recover that loss so just remember that thing that if you have taken a loss it is not uh the problem of the market it is your problem that uh, you have uh, you know uh, had to take that loss so you can only recover that loss when market gives you uh, the right opportunity so if market is not giving you the opportunity so just to, you know uh, relax and uh, surely it will give you uh, you know when the uh, time comes so if you try to do something which is not uh, normal to you or if you just try to experiment uh, something new then maybe it it may not work for you and it can at, uh, actually go drastically wrong against you as well so trying to recover losses is uh, you know is is what you should be uh, thinking of also but then uh, it should not be like a an immediate thing if you feel that there is an opportunity in the market immediately to recover the losses then just go for it but if you feel that there is nothing in the market really at the moment to take a trade but still the loss is there so so be it wait for a couple of days and i'm sure that uh, you know you will get the right opportunity where you can not only recover the losses but you can actually uh, you know make uh, double of what you would have lost and then finally just remember these words that you don't have to be correct always to make money right so it's just a game of probability just let the probability number uh, you know uh, play out its magic so uh, with this i come to the end of this uh, webinar today and uh, uh, just i would like to you know mention a few thoughts uh, to the uh, you know people who are for long term that uh, long term investors that you know rome was not built in a day so this is a you know saying that we all know but to the traders i would say that it is also the fact that hiroshima was destroyed in a day so with this i come to the end of today's presentation and i hope that uh, you actually enjoyed or you know i was able to share uh, something which probably added to uh, an added value to your existing knowledge uh, over the last five webinars and uh, thank you so much and uh, signing off this is your uh, host prasenjit biswas all the best for your future uh, trading career thank you